Good afternoon, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading reports for February 27, 2016. Market remains in bare normal conditions. On an annual basis, using weekly RSI 14, we're at the, about the middle of neutral at 47 out of 100. On a 10-day basis, using the 10-day NDX, we are overbought at 87 out of 100. Looking at the market mosaic, uh, price with respect to the 200-day moving average is yellow bearish. That has improved slightly. Uh, we're now 1% still into, into uh, bearish conditions. The slope of the 50 improved to minus 0.45%, which is uh, yellow neutral. Uh, ADX measure of uh, strength of trend has declined to 18.5, so neutral. ATR percentage has dropped to 1.62 percent. Was over well over two last week. The risk index is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10. 1.0 is the boundary between risk on and risk off. Current reading is at 1.106. So we are into risk on conditions. Take that score of 1.106, compare it to the last 5,000 trading days, find the average and the standard deviation. Allows us to compute the risk Z which is at 1.16. You can see a 90-day histogram of that indicator here. The fact that we've had a higher low and then moved into the green is favorable for the short-term uh, swing trades. Uh, we will be rebalancing the uh, monthly portfolio uh, this week. You can see the current holdings and then the holdings based on uh, close of closing prices on Friday. In ETF2, the theoretical exposure is at 0%. The model portfolio itself will be at 0.7, uh, 70% exposed. Excuse me. Looking at the components of the ETF13 and 32 portfolios, still only treasuries uh, on a buy signal for ETF13, Latin America. Emerging markets still f suffering the most. Uh, conservative U.S. indexes are closer to the top. Inside ETF 32, uh, again, it's uh, gold, treasuries, and defensive plays are above their four month moving average. Uh, Brazil, China, Latin America, the BRICS, energy, and financials all at the bottom of the ETF 32 stack. In the ETF Max, uh, looks like uh, still being dominated by gold, precious metals. Uh, still some uh, short-term interest generators here. Uh, big loss in uh, lead, and some gains here in crude. Uh, the German uh, DAX and in aluminum. No real trends uh, other than that. In the S&P 500, uh, I'll be stalking some momentum plays in Coach and uh, First Solar. Looking for momentum plays there. Uh, Fossil Group has some interesting looking numbers here. We're going to have to go take a look at that just to confirm or deny. Uh, Dollar General and Edison possibilities for second day or second week momentum. In the market health check, uh, the vertical blue lines are 10, 20, and 30 days worth of look back. Here's the 60 day look back. Uh, the red, the uh, purple horizontal lines are price targets that were once uh, support when they failed to became resistance and are now profit targets on the way back up. You see, we've marched our way up the price ladder uh, up, uh, up here to the far side of the floodplain. Uh, 195, 196. 
the shade, uh, shaded red area is uh, the 200-day moving average in the area beneath it. You've seen we've crawled out of this hole uh, almost 8%. Now we're about 1% away from getting back into sideways. Uh, we cleared an important uh, resistance level uh, on Friday. We'll see if that if that can hold. Um, if this uh, now holds support here, um, then we're looking at 198, 203, and then on back up to 20, uh, uh, 210, 211 for the all-time swing high. So uh, considerable progress made this week. The slope of the 30-period regression line you see has uh, now moved north of the dotted line, so it's into positive territory, and we're over overbought and the jaws of PPO are still open to the upside. So this looks favorable to me for um, for the markets. We put in uh, a double bottom and we're able to get through this resistance here at, one, at 195. One time we'll see if it holds. Failure here and we get 191, 187, uh, 184, 181. That's the, uh, these were the resistance levels that were broken through and become price targets on the way down if this bear begins to reassert itself. In ETF2, everything is still on a cash signal, so the posture of the model is 100% cash, 0% invested. Um, the S&P at 44 is better than the globals at 38. Inside the U.S., it's the large caps, then tech, then mid caps, and small caps. Uh, the S&P and then Asia less Japan are the two strongest se world sectors. In the two weakest Latin America and U.S. small caps. See the defensive plays here, staples and utilities still dominating in the S&P spiders. Global market model, uh, everything in the U.S. is below average except for the Dow and the S&P which are slightly above average. Japan, Asia, less Japan below average. Um, uh, strength in Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Taiwan, Malaysia, everything else in Asia is below average. Canada and Mexico, uh, emerging markets in Latin America are below average. Brazil, exceptionally below average. Uh, weakness across the board in Europe. Uh, gold, silver, treasuries, corporate bonds, and U.S. real estate uh, doing well in the alternate asset classes. Energy and oil still suffering. ETF top 30. A uh, little change from last week, dominated by defensive plays and uh, and gold, and the gold juniors. Uh, weakness in treasuries uh, of various forms, the white on the strength and then uh, uh, green on the consistency uh, is a sign of uh, strength leaving the market. So we're going to go take a look at uh, at treasuries. In the Dow, uh, strength leaders are those that are in green across the board, still, so it's still Verizon, Procter & Gamble, Walmart. And then weakness in Boeing, Apple, and American Express. Shifting to the daily, we have um, uh, short signals in uh, mid caps and small caps with the overreaction signal. And a number of uh, Symbols to choose from in the ETFs uh, for channeling over reaction. 5DD in Brazil is interesting. And triple screens and treasuries in Procter and Gamble. Looking at the Dow Tactical. Uh, here's that triple screen in Procter & Gamble. Lots of dojis to choose from. Nothing tests out on the auto framer. Uh, we got some frog quality numbers that are favorable in Chevron, uh, Walmart, Pfizer, Cisco, Intel, and DuPont. 
in the uh, ETFs, get, these are the overreaction signals in the mids and smalls. Got a channeling in the VIX. <coughs> Lots of triple screens to choose from, uh, including silver, uh, treasuries in the VIX, and a 551W in treasuries also. Here's the auto framer in treasuries. Uh, the regression line fractal framework, the usual suspects, the ones in the green on the top shelf are the ones that are the most numbers of their average true range below their long-term fair value, which we measure as the RL270. Um, American Express remains interesting there. And then the uh, ones on the bottom shelf in the red, these are the relative strength leaders that are the most numbers of uh, ATRs above their long-term fair value. So that could be a momentum play. So I'm going to look at uh, UTX and Walmart on, on those. Among the, uh, the pinches, these are the one day uh, postured for uh, making big moves. Um, I like uh, Disney, um, Conoco, and it's it's nice to note the uh, the U.S. market itself, SPY, is in there, and I see Apple and the Treasuries. Market mosaic, uh, the slope of the 30 regression line is up. The polynomial line is uh, accelerating. Uh, we've made a 3 SD move off the bottom. We're now up here into positive territory and it's, everything looks good. Uh, we're able to clear this key resistance level here. Uh, but now we'll see if this one uh, holds. If we gain continued momentum, uh, still looking for another 5 to 6% move back up to 210 and a retest of the previous swing high. You can see how smooth that cycling of, uh, the, of uh, the s and has been. Uh, volatility continues to drain out of the market. Basic stats for you. Looking at the slopes of the uh, 30, uh, the 10, 30, and the 90 uh, regression lines, uh, the 30 has moved back up to almost uh, right up to really to 1.0 at the top of its normal channel. Uh, the 90 has started to roll over and find support. Uh, the 10 has oscillated nicely uh, and pulled back a little bit. We're, we've cleared the river, and now that we're above this double top right here, the question is, will this northern edge of the river continue to hold as support, which was once resistance. The last two times it reached and touched that, it failed both times. The third time may be the charm. On the nearest neighbor, uh, look at that. The last time we were here, uh, we were back here, and so the market came back, tested the edge of the river, held, and then continued to go for another uh, almost 8% uh, up to the previous swing high. So we'll see what kind of, is, is that what this edge of the river is likely to do uh, or, or, or are we going to see some failure back towards 185. Just flipping through the rest of these for your reference, but that's everything I want to cover. We've got plenty of uh, targets to choose from for the week ahead and tomorrow. So it's Ken Law from Tortoise Capital. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry. I'll be going through these uh, trade frames for these individual targets uh, with the Swing Trade Online workshop people and, uh, and sharing those frames inside the chat room with uh, members and subscribers. So keep your risk measured and your powder dry.